Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner, welcome. Good thank to see you. Thank you for your service, and let me say thank you to the men and women of CBP, who I've been proud to spend a great deal of time with. Uh, the men and women you lead have an incredibly difficult job, an incredibly important job. They risk their lives on a daily basis, and, and, and let me say thank you uh, for the important service you and the men and women you lead provide. Thank you. Um, as you know, first six months of the Trump administration, we saw illegal crossings plummet, we saw apprehensions at the border plummet. Uh, and then since then, we've seen the numbers steadily increasing. Um, to what do you ascribe that increase in illegal crossings? The, the main factor, especially given the demographic changes we're seeing, uh, last month we had over 59% of crossings were either families or unaccompanied children. Uh, they're predominantly coming from Central America now, almost 70% in November, and all of these trends are just steepening at this point. Uh, we attribute that be to the understanding, the smugglers advertising it, and the migrants understanding either they come as a family or if they claim fear of return, they'll, they'll likely be allowed to stay indefinitely in the United States. So, so can you put some specifics on the numbers? What increase have we seen in, in family units crossing illegally? So in, in June, uh, well, actually, if you want to go back to, to April or March uh, of, of the 17, when we saw that huge decrease, uh, you know, we, we had fewer than, uh, you know, 10,000 people overall uh, and very small numbers of, of families uh, coming in. Uh, for instance, family units in uh, April of FY17 were, were 2,116. Uh, last last month was thirty thousand one hundred and fifty four. So to put a, a specific now is that 30, fine point on that, family 15, units or thirty thousand people in family units. Thirty thousand people in family units. That's how we count them. Um, how about unaccompanied minors? What what have we seen on the numbers there? So unaccompanied minors have been more stable, uh, but have also gone up. Uh, we're seeing about uh, five thousand uh, a month right now. To what extent are you all encountering either family units or unaccompanied minors who, who've been in the custody of human trafficking? Um, almost, almost exclusively. Human smuggling, uh, we would refer to it. And to what extent are you, are you saying that these, these kids are being subjected to either physical abuse or sexual abuse in, in the process of being smuggled into the country? A, 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 a harrowing percentage, Senator, are, are being affected to sexual, by sexual violence or, or other abuse uh, in the process of their journey. Uh, Doctors Without Borders, independent, uh, obviously humanitarian concern. Uh, they operate uh, over a dozen clinics in Mexico. Uh, they've stated that 68% of the people they interact with have been victims of violence uh, on, the, on the journey. 38% uh, of women and girls sexually assaulted. Uh, so it, the figures are, are devastating, and it's not just U.S. government data. It, it's uh, NGOs who are working with these populations to, to, to try to keep them safe. So, so do you share my assessment that, that nobody concerned with, with compassion or humanity should want to see any little boys or any little girls in the custody of human traffickers or human smugglers? Yeah, the, the, what, what's happening to some of the most vulnerable people in our hemisphere on this journey is deplorable, uh, and we need to work with Mexico to address these TCOs. We need to work with Central America to, to address the push factors, uh, and we've got to decrease the incentive in our legal system to invite these people into this dangerous cycle. To what extent has the Flores settlement proven an impediment to, to, to dealing with this problem? Well, in, in 2014, when we saw the first family surge, uh, then Secretary of Homeland Security Jay Johnson was able to detain families uh, together through an immigration proceeding and start removing them once we saw the, the uh, stark trend. Uh, that created a huge deterrent. Uh, immediately, the numbers dropped uh, of family units crossing. In 2015, a district court in California uh, ruled that unaccompanied children, even if they have a parent with them, could not be kept in, in federal custody more than 20 days. That's not long enough for an immigration proceeding with due process, which is our commitment. Uh, so as a result, we've seen family unit numbers climb really unabated but for the inauguration uh, of President Trump uh, in January 17. Uh, but as soon as, as uh, the migrants and smugglers realized the laws hadn't fundamentally changed, uh, we saw the family start to increase again to this level of 30,000 last month. What additional tools does CBP need 
to be able to effectively secure the border. So we, we have a border security improvement plan that we've submitted to Congress. Uh, we're in the process of, of updating that. Uh, border wall system is a fundamental capability for impedance and denial. We need more technology. Uh, we need better sensors for our air and marine uh, operations. And of course, we need agents and officers. Uh, also, we need technology at the ports of entry to address uh, the counter narcotics uh, efforts that we're trying to undertake there and get more vehicles and trucks through that screening as they enter Texas, uh, as they, they enter the stream of commerce in the United States. So really, we need that all four things in an integrated strategy.